In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this 3D toolbox in Blender. So let's begin. All right, so here I have Blender opened up and click anywhere and make sure you have this cube selected and press delete so that this is gone. And now you can press Shift A in order to add this plane. So go over to Mesh and add plane. Now, what you can do is just press Control D in order to duplicate and press S on the keyboard and X on the keyboard. And this time you can move this in the x direction like this somewhere around here looks fine and the reason why we duplicated it is because the first plane over here this plane that we had originally we will use this as the base and right now i'm just going to hide this because we're going to do changes with it once we have the toolbox done right now we just need to create the toolbox first All right so now what you can do is and since we have this selected you can press tab on the keyboard and this will take us to the edit mode and now press e on the keyboard and this will allow us to extrude and i'm just going with somewhere around here this looks fine all right and now what we need to do is go over here and select this edge selection mode and now select this edge from here and go over to this side by using your mouse scroll wheel and make sure you have shift selected and press this side as well so we have these two edges selected and now what we can do is press ctrl b on the keyboard and this will allow us to bevel so this is a shortcut for bevel and now what you can do is add use your mouse scroll wheel in order to add more sides to it so something like this so right now i'm just adding three sides to this this looks fine and press anywhere and this will be done all right and now what you need to do is make sure you go back to the vertex selection mode from here select this side from here and make sure you go over to this side press shift and select this side and now press j on the keyboard and this will join both of these sides and now we need to do the same thing for this side as well so select this side go over to this side press shift and then select this side and hit j on the keyboard and we have this whole thing joined all right so the next thing we need is to press ctrl r and this will allow us to create a cut like this so once you see this shape just press click on your mouse and you will get this option and the cut we need to make is should be somewhere over here so for me I'm using it this side. It doesn't matter if you have to do it precisely, but just somewhere above this one because we need to use this as the opening for the toolbox. So right now what we need to do is go ahead and select this face selection mode. Press this side and move towards these sides. Make sure you press shift and then select these sides as well. Move around, select shift and then press these side. You don't need to e pressing the shift button because once you press the shift button and move around this will not work you just simply need to leave it and then move around then press shift and then select uh, the sides that you need and also make sure to select this side at the bottom as well so shift and then select so all of these sides are now selected and now simply press p on the keyboard and this will allow you to separate the side from the top uh, side that we have and just simply select the selection and you can see over here now this is separated so this is the top one and this is the lower one so we can simply rename this as the upper and the lower so let me just check yes this is the lower one and this is the upper one now the next thing you need to do is make sure you once again select the edge selection mode and select this edge right here and hit shift s and then select cursor to select it and this will add the cursor right here in the middle now click tab on the keyboard and we are back to the object mode select the upper one from here right click and then go over to set origin and then select origin to 3d cursor all right and now i'm just going over to this uh, view this side now hit r on the keyboard and x on the keyboard and this will allow you to rotate in the x direction so something like this so once you're done with it you can just simply click and then you can see that this is how it looks it looks like the toolbox is open now the next thing we need to do is make sure you have the lower one selected first and 
hit tab on the keyboard so we are back in the edit mode and now press a on the keyboard so that we have all the sides selected for the lower one and hit alt e and select extrude faces along normal now this will allow you to add this exclusion but you need to do that within this uh, toolbox so somewhere around here looks fine and we're going to do the same thing for this upper side as well but you need to go back to the object mode select this side and come back to the edit mode click a so that everything is selected alt e and select extrude faces along normal and you can now set it to somewhere around here this looks fine all right and now go over to the top view and click on this uh, face selection mode select this side which is right at the top so this is the one uh, in the center yes this is the center one so you can click on this one and hit ctrl d to duplicate and s so that we can scale this lower this like this and now let's go ahead and click e on the keyboard and now we can exclude this to somewhere around here and let me use the hand mode to move around and now what you need to do is let me just position this accordingly and make sure you have the face selection mode in selected and click on this side press delete and then select faces and do the same thing for this side over here as well so let me just move right here select this side delete and faces and if we move right here you will see that we have this hollow shape now and this is exactly what we need so now select this side the top one over here hit e on the keyboard and then extrude this up Control b and then this will allow you to bevel so somewhere around here looks fine so now this looks like it is the handle for the toolbox so ba our basic shape is done and now we need to enable our base once again and make sure you select the base from here hit s on the keyboard and go back to the object mode hit s on the keyboard and now scale this up and now one final thing is to let's just go back to the make sure you have this upper selected and hit tab so we're back to the edit mode select this one and make sure you have the faces face selection mode selected and select this space right here Control d to duplicate and s to scale but x so that we can scale this in the x direction all right and this looks fine all right and now if we select s we can just scale this slightly up like this so this looks fine and let me just select this one and hit e so that we can extrude this a little bit yes so this looks fine but we need to make sure that we select everything from here so i'm just going to select these sides like this press shift select all these sides from here like this and now you can press p on the keyboard and you can separate it by selection and now let me just rename this to let's say the lock and we are done over here we can also uh, separate the handle from here as well but i'm just going to keep that keep it at with the box so now that we're done with it we can simply start adding the color so go over to the material preview mode and now we can start adding the colors now you can make sure you are in the object mode select this object which is the upper one go over to the material and select new and over here you can go over to the base color and then click on hex and you can paste any color code you can also use this wheel from here as well but this is the color that i'm using and i'm going to do uh, the same color for the lower one as well so here you can see but for the lock over here i'm going to add a different color so this is the one that i'm going with and finally for the base i'm going to use this color all right so this is done and now what we need to do is simply add in a light right now we already have this light source so if we go over to the render preview this is how it looks but i'm going to delete this for now and in the solid mode let's just unselect all of these 
and also the base let me unselect this and right here in the middle i'm going to press shift and right click so that this is in the center and now let's enable everything but this time let's press ctrl a and add in our light but this time i'm going to add area light and now just zoom out and press g on the keyboard and z on the keyboard so we can move this in the upwards direction and let's hit s so we can scale this up as well and now let's go over to the render preview mode and over here you can change the power to let's say 500 so right now our light is quite dim so we need to increase the power so let's just go with a thousand and let me just scale this in so i'm reducing the scale and press g and z so that we can move this slightly in the lower direction and now this is visible once again a little bit visible but still not enough so let's go ahead and duplicate our light press Control shift d in order to duplicate move this right here you can press g and x as well in order to move this right here and also press r so we can rotate it like this now do the same thing again Control d to duplicate g and x to move in the x direction and r to rotate it like this all right so this looks fine for now but we still need to add a little bit more light so let's just change the power to 1500 for all of these and this looks much better so this is the camera that we have already and let's press zero on the keyboard and this is how it looks and you can see that this is the preview that we are getting but we can just go ahead select the base press s on the keyboard and increase the size a little bit and now select our camera once again and press and then go over to the object over here and you can now change the location of the x and y and z as well all right and now let's go back to the data and you can change the focal length in order to change the zoom in and zoom out direction back to the object let's make sure that this is in the center and now select your base and hit s on the keyboard and you can increase this so that this covers the whole area like this all right and let's go back to the edit uh, camera view and over here you can see that we are getting a weird kind of light so what we can do is simply select our light right here press g on the keyboard and x on the keyboard to move this out a little bit and r on the keyboard so that we can move light in this direction now let's go back to our camera hit zero and this is the preview that we're getting we're still getting that shape over here so select the light from here press g on the keyboard x on the keyboard like this move this out press r on the keyboard and then move this in the same direction and this time we're going to move this slightly out a little bit more press r on the keyboard and move the light in and select our camera and then this is how it looks at the moment a little bit more uh zoom out required for the light over here and g and z and there we go so now let's see if we are getting it yes now we are getting the perfect view but we can also add a light from the front in order to add a little bit more better view so let's just duplicate this light once again Control d and g and this time phi and let's move this right here and let's move in this direction hit r on the keyboard and then you can move this up r on the keyboard move this up now if you go on, over to camera and press zero this is looking much better i want to add a little bit more light towards this side so you can go over to the light source and this time let's change this to 2000 press g on the keyboard y on the keyboard to move this slightly in and now let's see how this looks so now this looks much better 
All right, and now once you're done with it, you can go over to the render, change the render engine to cycles, change the device to GPU compute, change the max samples to 512, select denoise, go over to performance, change this tile size to 512, 512. And this is so that it does not take a lot of time to render. And now let's go over to the color management. And from here, you can change the look to medium high contrast, or you can even go high contrast. That's up to you. I'm just going with base contrast and let's increase the exposure a little bit like this. All right. And once you're done, you can go over to render, click on a render image. And this will open up a new panel and this will take some time to render out but once it is completed you can click on image and then click save as and this is basically how it's done all right so this was it this is how you can create this toolbox in blender i hope this video was helpful and i'll see you in the next one